Hello everyone, I am Atlas here for Horizon Esports, standing in for Ashley Kang because it's a little bit more difficult for her to introduce uh, the, the show herself when she is in fact the one being interviewed. So Ashley, uh, welcome to the show. Uh, is this the first time that you've been interviewed yourself? First time in the video, yes. Crazy, crazy stuff. So Ashley, what? Um, I know your background isn't in journalism what what uh what was it about journalism that caught your mind after having such a i guess software heavy uh history in your life so um for people who don't know my background um i actually don't come from any kind of esports or journalism background until about a year ago and i suddenly appeared in the lck scene yeah. <laughs> um so I actually used to be a software engineer and I was based in New Zealand and my interest actually first came from not in journalism but in esports. Um, I was very interested in League of Legends as everyone who is watching this might be. Um, wasn't was very passionate about LCK which is the league that I used to watch since 2013. And I still believe this is the ga case but there has always been a big gap between the LCK scene and how the Western audience perceive it because of the language barrier, because of the cultural barrier. Korean players are often seen as these robots that just say, oh, we will play better in the next game and we'll try our best, please support us. Mm -hmm. So I, as someone who is fluent also in Korean and is in the culture, I wanted to break down a little that barrier a little bit and I just wanted people to like what I like more, which is the <laughs> players, which is the league. So one day I decided, okay, I'll quit my job in the New Zealand and take out some of my savings and come to Korea and see if it works out. And honestly, I did not expect it to work out. Yeah, I actually remember because uh, we sat down for dinner and you were, you were saying, oh yeah, I think I'll be here for a couple of months giving it a try. And I think that was what, a year and a half ago, something like that? <laughs> A year and a two months ago, yes, yeah. Yeah, so uh, certainly things definitely worked and you've been finding success after success and it's okay. fantastic. So I, I don't know whether a lot of people know this, but Horizon is, uh, Horizon Esports is just you. Oh my God. Like, how, <laughs> how, how, do you, how do you manage to, like, because I, even I didn't know this. Having known you, I, I found out about Horizon after you, of course, um, but I didn't know that it was just your branding that you made, like, how how did you how did it go so under the radar and how is it managing your own sort of media outlet? Um, so oh, I feel a bit self conscious talking <laughs> about this. Uh, so um, number one, that is not hundred percent true. I do have some like interns both in Korea and around the world. Mm. Um, you might recognize a name like Kevin Kim or mm. Hyunee, who does help out a bit with like the translations or. Uh, sorry, translations and subtitles and stuff like that. But I will say that 80% 80 of, 80 of the content creation is by me and 100% of the operations by me, which can be a bit daunting. And I actually believe that my background helped me a lot around being able to establish that. I have a software background, so making the Horizon website or getting the YouTube site and getting all the SEO, like search optimization running, wasn't that difficult for me. Um, in terms of content, it's trial and error. Like, I remember coming to the LZK Media Room at 2018 Spring Split, mm. and I couldn't even look at the player that I was interviewing because I was so nervous. But as long as you continue to have that passion for, hey, I have the end goal, and that is to tell the stories out of those interviews so the Western fans know more about the people I'm interviewing. As long mm. as you have the clear goal and you keep focusing and keep working, I think you eventually become better and faster at what you do. And you certainly do a hell of a lot of work, having uh, so much to run in that channel as well, also doing your videos for, for ESPN at the same time. Like, there's just so much, so much. If you guys want to get uh, Ashley Kane content on the internet, you certainly can. It comes out, feels like once every three hours. It's just insane, the amount of stuff that this girl makes. I, I want to talk about uh, interview style and differences. Would you say that your interview style, having lived in Korea for so long, do you think you've got more of a Korean style or do you think that you have like the global interview style if you look over at, uh, you know, a person like Shox or like Law from over in, uh, in EU? Like, where do you think that uh, your, your style belongs and maybe who are you, some of your inspirations? 
So you mean I live long in New Zealand, not Korea? Well, I mean, I'm saying that your journalism career oh, okay. is okay. Korean rather than on the global scale. And it's, it's, we have to narrow it down because you haven't been doing it for that long, despite being uh, so good at it. So I think I can break down the question into two answers. Number one is the difference between the Korean and the Western scene in terms of the interview styles mm. and my interview style in general. So yes, 90% um, of the work that I've done in esports is in the Korean scene. I've been to MSI, I've been to Wales, but most of my interviews have been with the Korean players. And there's a very, very different interaction. Um, I find that Western players are more willing to talk about their own feelings or or other players too. Mm. If, um, meanwhile, Korean players are more likely to be polite or cautious to express their own opinions. And also, I feel that in a Western interview, if Sharks is interviewing, let's say, Perks, they stand mm. as equals. It's mm. a conversation, but I'm not sure whether it's an industrial thing or whether there is this in inherent hierarchical culture in Korea that I pl there are specific roles as soon as you step into the interview. I'm the Kizanim, like, mm -hmm. and he's the player. And there is a different, like, interaction dynamic, dynamic of respect going in. Mm. So for me, it's been all about playing into that dynamic of respect while having my own play interview style. And that goes back to the second question which is I think I'm somewhere in between the Western interview style and the Korean interview style simply because the Western interview style will not work in the LCK yeah. like in West you can say hey you were pretty bad in that <laughs> match and I think they'll actually give pretty funny answer or reaction mm. to that especially if it's like a player who's quite outgoing such as Yanko or double lift but mm. in Korea that will actually cut down the reports straight away yeah. because that is not the interaction they expected and you have to be more careful and worded politely about asking about, especially about their own shortcomings or success or pride. Yeah. And also because Korean players aren't as used to us being asked about outside match questions. Mm. So I try to factor all, all those things in while st still trying to keep the interview more conversation style more like we equal we just having a conversation yeah and i actually have a follow-up question to that as well because i know a lot of the praise that you've got especially from the korean community is that <laughs> <laughs> is that the players uh, have been able to open up to you more like is there is there a secret to that like i know that based on like the hierarchical thing and if you guys don't know uh korean culture is very much age hierarchy style right like you always look up to the person older than you that's mm -hmm. basically how you talk growing up mm -hmm. so that's what uh ashley's talking about when it comes to you have these like set roles within that interview space so what is it that allows you to sort of break that down more than other korean interviewers uh have been able to how do you manage to relate to these players better yeah. um so to give a bit more background to korean viewers who's watching this um, Western interviews, I definitely feel more one-on-one. -on -one. It does feel like a conversation. And how do I try to achieve that in a Korean interview? Uh, I, this is going to become a bit more like a philosophical or yoga book kind of <laughs> answer. Yes, but I feel that a lot of people forget their players are just... People? Peoples. Just young men in their early 20s. Mm -hmm who are uncertain about a lot of things and proud of about many other things and working very hard. And I really go into the interview with the mindset, I want to get to know you more as a person. And often the question that I ask them, such as, hey, um, what would you be doing in five years time, which is not a match related question, or what do you regret most about the split? Mm -hmm. Those things are something that comes from myself by being very curious and having a report with their player, mm -hmm. even though that report might not always be two-sided, but I think continuously having that report helps with the conversation. And also I try to read up a lot about the player. I feel like you're, you're also, you come into an interview genuinely interested, mm -hmm. whereas that's, uh, it can't be said for absolutely everyone because it's, it's hard to have 
the amount of touch that I guess you do on uh, the LCK scene, like being able to keep up with the amount of players that we have must be difficult for a lot of other, um, a lot of other interviewers, but Ashley seems to find more time in the day. I just don't think you sleep very much or something like that. I don't know what that is, but uh, it is definitely uh, very impressive, but it's something that I think that is culturally more difficult for Korean interviewers to do anyway. So congratulations on that one. I, uh, I do want to move to um, a little bit more about how uh, your success has come about and how, how you've been dealing with that. Because I know that, uh, you know, coming from a software engineer background, right, you don't spend a lot of time in front of a camera. You don't spend uh, a lot of time, you know, with, with people asking you questions on the internet and things like that. How was it uh, dealing with going from someone that had, you know, their, their circle of friends and that's it to the entire internet, you know, judging things that you do? How, how, did, it, how did that transition go? Um, I'm still dealing with it, to be honest. It's been so weird because I went to the 2019 MSI recently at Vietnam and LZK is quite big in Vietnam, it turns out, because there were fans coming up to me, hey, are you actually K? And wanting to take selfies with me. And this is someone who less than a year ago was just minding her own business in a corporate world, like mm. programming some websites. So, and I talked to a friend and oh, I just met, ca caught up with another friend and I was talking about League of Legends and he knows you. So it is a bit boggling. Um, it does make me feel a bit proud and also a bit humble and also very scared because can I live up to expectations of many, like a um, very large group of people compared to a few people mm. that I'm close with. Um, I don't have an answer to that yet because it's something I'm dealing with yeah. Have you have you been getting much, uh, I guess, constructive criticism, or have you been having to deal with uh, anyone sort of like telling you how to do your job on the internet yet? Has there has there been much of that, or has it been pretty good? I actually wish there were more of that. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Make sure you get all of those complaints in. Just pop it down as a comment in the video. I don't like it when people say, "Oh, like," if it's like something about my appearances or like something that shallow. I want to, of course, ignore it, but. I think criticism is the only way for someone to become better and because of that I love criticism. Of course I feel appreciated and validated and motivated when people say they enjoy my work but if someone says hey I like your work but you could also become better by fixing this and this and this then I know what to fix mm -hmm. and I become better which is always my goal. Yeah, the thing that's difficult about that, of course, is that uh, when you're exposed to so many people, you're exposed to so many opinions, and you don't necessarily know how educated uh, they are, of course. So you can fall into some traps when it comes to when it comes to looking for the old uh, feedback on the internet. But I wish you luck in uh, in 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 everything moving forward. I, I do want to bring it back to an LCK question because uh, I want to know what you think about the chaos that is uh, the LCK at the moment. And uh, just quickly, give us a top three moving into week 10. This might help me for, for my prep. So uh, what do you think? I think that LC, okay, LCK is so chaotic because we, after we came out of 2018, had that whole world shock and came into 2019, um, the team started to experiment more, like, you know, some teams like Africa Freaks started, had like a whole young roster coming in. Everyone's tackling the whole, the new meta of aggression, skirmishes, and chaos in the map differently. Mm -hmm. And that saw us having more diversified types of teams in the LCK, even mm -hmm. though we always will be criticized for being a bit slow. Mm -hmm. And also because they're trying something new, all the teams have different highs and lows like i don't see any team that has no flaws at all just compared to 2015's skt so to speak mm -hmm. and i think if you have flaws then other teams can take advantage of that and even a weaker team can upset a stronger team and i think that's why we started seeing that bit of a chaos yeah a bit of a hanwha life beating skt situation things like that or but or but yeah, yeah, Dunwon Gaming also losing to Hanwha. Maybe Hanwha's just the best team. Unfortunately, weren't able to play throughout the majority of the season, which is uh, certainly a bad news bear situation. But Ashley, top three. Top three. Give us your top three right now. Top three. Um, SKT, I think they still have that, like, you know, Faker promising to uh, win, win streak break. Like, they, yep. 
all the players have such experience, confidence going into the matches, and I think that's going to benefit them hugely, especially going into the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, Damon Gaming, they have their highs and lows, um, even though they can be still weak on like an objective fighting and rotations and stuff like that. I just think that the ceiling of individual players are too high for us to cross them out. And number three, I still have hope for Griffin. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, just, just so you guys know, at the moment, Griffin's stand at the top of the standings. So, yeah, that sounded very nice. And, uh, and, and, and we've, uh, we've voted for SKT Darmon as well. And that is just how insane the LCK, LCK is at the moment. But uh, thank you so much, Ashley, uh, for the interview. I'm going to be putting it up on your website. So um, this is going to be a very confusing outro. So thank you so much for watching, guys. And uh, we'll see you next time.